Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa. One of the main questions that I often see in my comments on this channel revolves around and boils down to something to the effect of, girl, how do you read so much? Like, how are you getting through this many books? I know you got a job. I know you got other things you got to do. How is this happening? And I have made a video about how to read faster and more. So I'll link that somewhere. So those, that's like my true kind of like tips. A lot of it boils down to reading speed, uh, kind of knowing your genres when you're in the right mood for things. Not everything I read is super high quality. So that makes it a little faster to get through. And then audiobooks. So those, you know, there's, there's a variety of tools in my arsenal of how I get through, you know, between 20 and 30 books usually in a month. A video idea came to me while I was watching somebody's What I Eat in a Day, which was what if I did a What I Read in a Day? Basically, what if I kind of just showed you guys how I read so much, which I think will potentially be kind of a boring video, but maybe would be a good sort of illustration of what I mean by some of these things that I've talked about. Um, so I decided that that's what we're going to do. That's going to be my next reading vlog. And basically, like I said, it's a what I read in a day, and I'm going to pick two different days to take you guys along. So first, I am filming this clip uh, on the day before Labor Day here in the US, which is a holiday. And I've had some folks in town. I have been running some errands, yada, yada, yada for the rest of the weekend. But on this Monday, I have no plans. Like by design, I have zero plans. Uh, in theory, I probably will do a little prep for BookNet Fest and a little meal prep for the week, things like that. But conceptually, I have nothing I have to do tomorrow. So that is one kind of reading day where I can get through a lot, where I have cleared the decks and I can just make time to focus on reading. Um, so that is gonna be the first kind of day for my what I read in a day. And then I'm gonna pick a work day and I'm gonna show you what my reading schedule and my reading habits are like on a work day, just so that you can get a sense of sort of uh, an extreme of the fact that I do, I try to carve out one or two days a month where I literally have nothing I have to do and I just focus on reading to relax and another more just sort of like day to day how I'm able to fit reading into my daily life. So with that being said, let's segue into my what I read in a day. So I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm assuming I'm going to be looking pretty cash. So enjoy that. Good morning, friends. Uh, it is the next day. And I do not have to do jack shit today. Well, not entirely true. So I found out after I filmed my clip yesterday that one of my friends is going to come stay the night with me because they're traveling through Nashville. So that does alter my plan slightly because here's the calculus. On a day like today, like I woke up at 8-ish. And uh, on a day like today, that means if I woke up at 8 and I probably want to be asleep by 11 tonight... I have, that's 15 hours. If I had no plans, I probably would assume that that's about 12-ish hours I could devote to reading. And my average reading speed is about 60 pages an hour. So that would put me at 720 pages in theory that I could read today. If I'm not doing audio, if I'm, if I'm physically reading. So that would be like my max. Now that I have somebody coming, I'm going to guess that that reading target is probably more like I probably could read about nine hours today. So times 60, that's 500 and 560 pages, 540 pages. Okay. 540 pages is probably what I could get through today. So um, I'm thinking through, because there's, there's basically two different strategies I would take on a day like today. If I was going to have that full 760-ish pages or whatever, uh, I, would, I would consider making it a two-book day, meaning that if I had two shorter books, so two books that were under 300 pages, I could probably read one in about five hours, take a couple hours of break, and then come back and read another 300-ish page book. I think now that I know that I'm only going to have nine hours, that's probably not the best strategy. And I was just looking at my TBR of things that I need to read this month, quote unquote. Um, so the books that that would probably work with would be a couple of the romances that I have as arcs. So I possibly could have done that. I think, though, that's probably not going to be the 
best idea. Yes. Yeah, so the and the other thing that I had considered was trying to read Northanger Abbey all today. Um because if I had had 12 hours, I think that that book is roughly 400 pages, but if I'd had 12 hours, I would have been able to slow my reading speed down and get it all read in one day because that's the kind of book that I would probably split, slow my reading speed down for um, because part of what you're, well, A, the it's a more difficult book in terms of it's not necessarily um, contemporary prose style. Jane Austen is by no means a difficult read, but not just like kind of like the window pane prose that I would expect from a lot of contemporary fiction. So um, that was an option. But again, now that I have nine hours, I'm thinking mm, I probably would want to re slow my reading speed down to probably about 40 pages. So that'd be like 360 pages, which I don't think would be quite enough to get to get through that book today. So probably what I'll do with Northanger Abbey, because I really want to read that this month, is I may um, pick a weekend and essentially break it up over over two days. But anyway, those are all the things I'm not going to do. So what am I going to do? It occurred to me um, as I was laying here kind of contemplating, what, what do I want to read? That I could attempt to make some progress on this guy, which is books I, ni my 19 books I want to read in 2019 list. So some of the ones that could be a good fit for this size of book I guess Bayou Moon by Alona Andrews could be a good fit, but I think I probably don't need that much time to get through it. Um, I think The Diviners by Libba Bray could be a good choice because if I'm remembering rightly, that's over 500 pages, which is like, that would be a good choice for today is a, a book that was over 500 pages. Um, the Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin might be a good choice. Um... Or Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I think the three of those possibly could be could be good candidates for what I'm going to read today. Um, off, like, thinking that through, I'm going to say that The Diviners probably sounds the most appealing to me because it is YA, um, so in terms of, like, the depth, like, a part, one of the things I like about YA fantasy type stuff is that it's not quite as involved in terms of its world building normally, and I that's a, that's a pro for me. Um, I kind of have to be in the mood for adult fantasy where there's like a lot of really detailed world building and whatnot. So I actually that kind of sounds nice. And then I think it also is like a mystery component, so it would be a nice sort of fantasy mystery mashup. So now that we're saying that, that sounds probably like what I'm gonna do actually. Let Okay, so my candle is saying that this is 603 pages, and the typical time to read it is 9 hours and 57 minutes. Um, I usually beat that typical time to read by a little bit, so I'm going to guess that 9 hours is probably a reasonable guess for how long this is going to take. So, I do, let's go ahead and lock that in and say that The Diviners by Libba Bray is going to be my, my book of the day. And um, I will check in with you guys. I, we will see because if I end up not liking this, I may DNF it. And that would come probably around roughly 50 pages in. So for a, this is the joy of reading on a Kindle. Um, for a 603 book, or how many, I always look at the location. So that's 8,125. So if I get to roughly location 1,000 and I'm not feeling it, I may DNF it, but hopefully I really like this. There's a lot about this that I, in theory, should like. So let me dive on in. I'm going to start off reading here in bed, which is one of my favorite things to do on this kind of lazy day is to read in bed for the morning, uh, get up and then make lunch and go from there. So I'll see you guys later. Okay, so it has been an hour. I gave myself an hour to see how much I could read and what my pacing was like. So I started around 8.45. It's now 9.45. Um, and the lesson learned here is that my strategy of trying to pick a bigger book so that I would have like one big thing to read all day, I don't think is going to work out quite the way I expected because if you can't tell, I'm already about 25% of the way through this in an hour, meaning that I'm going to probably be able to finish this book in roughly four hours. Um, so that opens up some possibilities. I could switch to something else. Um, it occurs to me that I know that an in-depth book by J.D. Robb takes me roughly six hours to read. So I'm tempted to switch and get that done. I don't know. I mean, I'm enjoying the 
this, I think I'm going to be surprised if this ends up being more than a three star book. And if it was going to take me the full, however many hours I thought it might take me to read it, I think I probably would DNF it. But since I figured out that this is probably only going to end up being like four hours of my time, I'm, I'm going to just keep going. Um, it's intriguing. Like it's, uh, it's a different kind of YA historical fantasy kind of thing. Like it's set in the twenties. It's got a lot of the twenties atmosphere. Um, I'm not that sold on the characters, which is what is keeping this from being something that I really love, but it's okay. It's, it's different. And I, I think the writing is pretty good. So yeah, I guess I'm trying to decide if I want to hold this and cause if I've only got about three hours left to finish it off, that's something I could do on a weeknight as opposed to doing it today. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let me, I'm going to, let me go brush my teeth and start like getting out of bed and I'll think about what I'm going to do. Okay. So it's about 15, 20 minutes later and I got ready and I was thinking, and I just, I think I'm making good momentum right now on this particular book. Sorry, I'm making myself coffee. Um, I'm making good momentum on it. So I kind of decided I'm going to just go ahead and keep going with it, even though this does technically mess up my kind of theory of the case for the day. So what I'll probably do is I'll finish this book. Uh, I'll take a little break, just sort of let my mind clear a little bit, and then I'll pick something pretty different from it in terms of like mood and whatever. Um, and that I would say, if you are somebody who is trying to read a lot or like doing a 24 hour readathon or whatever, I do think that that is another way to keep your momentum up when you're, when you're trying to put books in is, um, not to read the same things back to back to back, because then I find that sometimes things start to run together or you start to get a little impatient with the second book because it's just, too similar to the first one you were trying to read. That's, that's just my experience. So I'm going to make myself some coffee and then I'm going to settle back in and see how long it takes me to polish off the diviners. Yeah. I, like I said, I think that if this book was taking me longer to read, I probably would DNF it just because I don't think it's going to end up being a favorite, but you know, I'm curious enough to see what happens. We'll, we'll just go ahead and keep chugging along. Okay, we got coffee. So now I'm gonna curl up. I'm watching some old books in Lala. I often, when I'm reading, instead of having like music or something on in the background, I personally like to have like old long videos that I've seen a few times uh, as my kind of background noise. So let's settle in. time check. It's noonish. And I think I'm at like 70-ish percent of the way through with the book. Yeah, it's it's not my favorite. I really enjoy the like religious mystery elements of it. That's something I really like. Um, in books in general, that's always something that catches my attention. But there's just something, I don't know, there's something about the characters and kind of how, I think the fact that there's so many point of views is kind of slowing me down a little bit. I wish that it was a little more focused. Um, but I'm not mad at it. Uh, yeah, I, I, if it was going to take me a lot longer to read, I definitely would have DNF this just because it's not, to me, it wouldn't be worth nine to 10 hours worth of reading, but as it is, it's going to end up being like four hours. So I think it'll be fine. Anyway, I'm about to make, do some meal prep for the week and make myself some lunch. Usually like uh, when I'm cooking, I'm about to cook up some sausages for my work pack lunch and then I'll use the fat and it as the base to cook something else. So um, I am going to, I guess, set you guys up here. Hi. Usually what I do when I'm cooking is I will either listen to an audiobook, which I'm not really in the mood to do right now, um, or I, if I'm in the middle of reading, I'll kind of like have it with me and do a little bit of reading while I am cooking. So uh, I'm going to cut this up and then I will start cooking and I guess I'll let you guys see that because I will be reading during part of that.
Okay, so uh, I managed to read another, you know, 10% in that half hour when I was making lunch prep and some meal prep. So I'm gonna eat this and I'm gonna try to finish this book up. Okay guys, I finished and now I'm gonna go let my Kindle charge and I'm gonna kind of have a palette cleansing little interlude here. So it's about, it's coming up on three o'clock. Um, I struggled to get all the way through this in one sitting the way I normally would. I don't know. It was just, I think that the thing that keeps this book from being like a four star for me, I'm probably gonna land on a three and a half because I really did like the like occult mystery piece of this. Just far too many point of views and I would get into some of them that I just didn't care about and it would make me be like, hmm, maybe I'm gonna go check my Instagram or maybe I'm gonna go do this. Like it would make me kind of lose focus a little bit. So I'm gonna end up on a three and a half. I can totally see why people really like this series. And um, yeah, it's one that I would recommend uh, just with the caveat of I had a hard time caring as much about all of the point of view characters. Same kind of issue I often have with like multiple timelines where basically anytime you split point of view or timeline, you are running the risk that the reader is not going to care as much about some of the point of views or timelines as others. And um, yeah, that was definitely true for me in this case. So I will probably look up some sort of synopsis to see how the series, you know, arc progresses, but I don't think I'll continue in the series. I did like this better though than some of the other YA fantasy series I've tried out this year. Like I like this better than um, like the Gilded Wolves or Wicked Saints or A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Like I liked this better than any of those. Um, so yeah, anyway, so I've already read, it's three o'clock. I've already read 600 pages for the day. I, like I said, I'm gonna charge this. I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. I need to do a couple of things on videos in terms of editing some metadata and things like that. So I will take a little break and do that. Um, I just found out from my friend that she's gonna be here probably around six. So I'll have a couple of hours and we can see if I can read something else. I probably need to read something pretty different in terms of genre. And then I'd also like to read something that maybe I could finish for the day. I do love starting and finishing books in the same day when I can. So I may look and see, I've got a few, actually, while I'm thinking about it, let's just, let's just go ahead and look at my list, shall we? Um, I have a few, oh, by the way, I'm trying out a lipstick here to see how it wears. I often, for really bold lipsticks on days where I'm not, I know I'm not really going out, um, I'll try them out at home after I've eaten to see if it like travels outside the lip line and things like that. So anyway, trying this bold ass brown lipstick right now. Okay, so there are three romances that I have as arcs right now that possibly could fit the bill. So I have A Cowboy Under the Mistletoe by Jessica Clare, Faker by Sarah Smith, and Twice in a Blue Moon by Christina Lauren. Probably not Twice in a Blue Moon because that one usually is a little more substantive. So yeah, I may do either Faker or A Cowboy Under the Mistletoe, but I also may just check my e-reader and see what kind of books I have in my active TBR right now. I think a, a light romance probably would be a good shift away from sort of a paranormal mystery. So anyway, let me have my little break and then I will touch base with you guys here in a little bit. Okay, so it is an hour-ish later. Uh, it's like 4 o'clock, 4.15. So I've got a couple hours until my friend comes. So I am going to go ahead and get started on Faker by Sarah Smith. So this is a new contemporary romance that is coming out, I believe, in October. So it was on my list of things I needed to read this month. And it sounds like it's sort of a hate to love kind of situation, which I can be hit or miss on. Um, but I don't know. I just thought I would give this one a try. And it's a pretty different tone, I think, than The Diviners. So this one, I think, was 336 pages. I'm going to guess it will take me around four hours to read it in total. Uh, so I'm going to read a couple, a, a little bit here right now until my friend gets here. Once she gets here, I'm sure we'll be hanging, but then I probably will check in again with you guys before I go to bed, because usually I read a little bit before I fall asleep. So let's see how we do. Okay, so my friend is here, and uh, that means I'm going to be done reading for the day. So I got halfway through Faker, which is good, but it is clearly written by a British person pretending they're from Nebraska. So there's a lot of, like, Britishism spoken by a Nebraskan, which just, like, is not working for me. Um, but it's pretty good. Three and a half stars, probably. So that takes me to... 
think 150 pages in that one. So let's call it like 750 pages for the day, which is a lot, but pretty typical. So I may check in. I'll probably read a little bit before I go to bed. So I'll check in then. But for now, we're going to do some tarot. Good morning, everybody. Um, it is not the next day. It's actually the day after the next day. So two days later. <clears throat> and I just realized I forgot to actually check in with you guys on my final counts for, um, oh, sorry, let me pour myself some coffee here. Okay, gonna have coffee now. So um, I forgot to update you guys on my final counts for uh, my day of like all day lazy reading. So I finished the diviners. That was 578 pages is what I think I had in my spreadsheet. Uh, and then I did end up finishing Faker because uh, I really got into it um, at about the halfway mark. So I ended up staying up a little bit late and finishing that off. So that was 336 pages. So math time, that is 914 pages, which is a lot. I mean, like that, when I say that, that's like, that sounds like a shit ton of pages. But one was a YA fantasy mystery thing, and the other one was a contemporary romance. Those are genres that are easier for me to read quickly. Um, for both, I mean, I read for probably about nine hours. So really, we're talking about my average reading speed, which is 60 pages, getting up to about 100 pages. So, I mean, that's just sort of, yeah, how it, how it went that day which was pretty darn good. Um, so today is not gonna be like that though. Today is a working day for me, um, but it is a working day where I actually have a pretty good stretch of the day where I'm not in meetings, which is not always what I can do. But when that happens, I listen to audiobooks. So I haven't decided which audiobook I'm going to read yet, but I will let you guys know and I will take you along with me to work. And then in the evening, I'll also probably do some reading and we'll see how much reading I get done today. Okay, so now I'm at work, um, and I just realized that I listen to my audiobooks on my phone, and I talk to you guys on my phone as well, so that's tricky. Um, I was looking at what I have up on the docket uh, for audiobook, and I think I'm between either doing Dying of Whiteness by Jonathan Menzel or Parkland by David Cullen. Both of these are pretty serious topics. Dying of Whiteness is essentially about how, like, essentially white male toxic masculinity is literally killing white men. Um, and in the U.S., and I, that's something I feel, yeah, I have a lot of resonance with that. Um, and then Parkland is David Cullen's uh, account of the Parkland shooting. He wrote, <clears throat> excuse me, Columbine, which is um, essentially like one of, uh, like a modern nonfiction masterpiece, which is a great book if you've not read it. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to read one of the two of those. We will see. Most of my meetings are clustered in the afternoon, so I probably won't get much done this morning. It'll probably be more in the afternoon when I'm working on a few things. Hey guys, it is the afternoon and I'm finally getting to take a lunch break. Um, I thought I would just tell you guys how things are going. So I have had pretty much back-to-back -back meetings for about five hours today. <laughs> Luckily they are mostly done at this point. So I am going to be switching my focus wholly to my audiobook, which is Dying of Whiteness by Jonathan Menzel. And it's super good so far. So, so far I think I'm about 10% of the way in. Um, I do listen to audiobooks at two times speed, and that is because um, I cannot co concentrate on them at one time speed. Like, it's too slow, and I just get kind of lost in the words. So this is, I think, a nine and a half hour audiobook, which means that it should take me the equivalent of four hours and 45 minutes to get through it. Uh, I think I've gotten one hour of the total audiobook, so 30 minutes of my listening time done. Um, is that how that works? I don't know. It's been a long day. <laughs> but basically I'm at eight hours and 45 minutes ish or eight hours, eight and a half hours left. So that means I have four hours and 15 minutes left of this audiobook. Um, and I just grabbed listening to the other things kind of in between meetings. If I had things that ended a little early, I just switched over to an audiobook. Sometimes I would do a podcast instead, but today I'm focusing on an audiobook. Um, and so far it's super good. Really thought-provoking. It's a very similar argument to um, What the Hell is Wrong with Kansas or whatever that book was called, except it's essentially making an argument from health outcomes or like overall wellness outcomes and not just economic outcomes of people in, um, in the U.S. and conservative states who 
vote essentially against their own interest in what they see as like a higher cause. Uh, and basically he's arguing that it's no longer just conservatism, but it's also like political fideism with white nationalist underpinnings to it. So very interesting argument. And yeah, so I'm going to heat up my lunch real quick at two o'clock in the afternoon and uh, I'm going to spend the rest of the day listening to this audio book. I think I have one meeting, but other than that, I'll just plug into that. So I will check in with you guys later. Okay, so we are almost at the end of the day and I am almost halfway done. I've got one more surprise meeting that came up I need to go to, but I think by the time I get in my car, I'll be roughly halfway done. I'm really liking this. I think as not as like a book, it's not the best nonfiction I've ever read, but it's very interesting and well argued. Um, so right now I'm thinking like a four star, but yeah, it's really good. So I'll check in with you guys once I leave. Okay, we're back in the car and uh, I think I'm at like right around the halfway mark-ish, forget when we last talked. Uh, so I'm gonna listen to some more on my way home. And uh, that means, let's see, I'm probably, it's gonna take me a half hour to get home, so that's like an hour of audiobook, so that's like 10% of it. I probably will take care of on my ride home. So let's dive into uh, more depressing stories of how, uh, yeah, just the forces of our own narratives about what it what the good life means basically that's kind of one of my biggest takeaways from this it's just like once you have this very specific idea of what a good life for yourself includes it's very hard to shake that off so anyway let's let's listen to some more bummerific uh audiobook here okay we're back at the home front uh and i think i'm gonna pause my audiobook there i was doing a couple of little chores around the house uh, I would guess, oh, percentage-wise, it's a 350-page book. I'm going to guess that I got through roughly 200 pages of that today, um, which is definitely not something I can do every day, but this was a day where I didn't have back-to-back -back meetings all all day long, um, and the things I needed to work on were not there. A lot of it was sort of like formatting things or things that I don't have to like really think about as much. It was more just sort of like tasks. So today was a day where I was able to get through a lot of a book. Um, I'm traveling tomorrow, so I may polish that off then. We'll see. Uh, if not, I'm happy that I made some good progress in that. And then I just realized that this is going to be a slightly atypical day for me because tomorrow I don't have work. I'm actually traveling to book Nap Fest. Yay! Uh, so that means I have some leeway to stay up a little later than I might. Um, and I am going to see, this is a pretty short book, a man, a man Lay Dead. It's not even 200 pages. So I think I can probably polish this off tonight if I get in the groove. We'll see how I do with it. Uh, first, I'm going to eat dinner and then I'm going to start reading again. I, yeah, I haven't ended up reading as much as I thought I might. I keep getting distracted. So I'm still reading A uh, Man Lay Dead. I've read about 50 pages of it. Um, it is 9.30, and yeah, I just kept getting distracted by social media, and I've been working on a design for my profile picture. Um, I had a graphic designer do it, and it looks great, and we've been going back and forth, so I was wrapping that up. Um, so yeah, I didn't, I just haven't made as much progress as I thought I might, um, but you know, it's, I'll probably read a little bit more before I go to bed. I'll let you guys know in the wrap-up if I do. But, I mean, you've, so you've seen. Like, I had meetings, I listened to an audiobook, and then I read a little bit in the evening, and I still managed, I mean, I got through probably more than 200 pages today. Let's, I forget what I decided. I think I decided that I probably listened to roughly 200 pages of the audiobook, and I've read another 50, so, like, let's call it 250 pages on a work day. Um, without it being super stressful. So, yeah, pretty typical. Uh, I'm gonna start winding down. I'm very sleepy. Okay, guys, it has been a few days since last we talked. Uh, yeah, so BookNet Fest has come and gone. I am now back, and uh, I'm gonna wrap up this sweet ass reading vlog. So, um, I wanted to touch base on kind of where I ended up in terms of all of my reading. So in day one, you saw me read all of the Diviners and I also read all of Faker. So that totaled up to 914 pages in one day, but you saw, 
that was a day where I did almost nothing. Uh, I did have my friend come by in the evening. So I had a few hours in the evening where we were talking, but that was a combination of, I have a pretty fast reading speed anyways, and the uh, style, essentially like the genre made the writing simpler and therefore easier for me to get through quickly. So it even increased my average reading speed is about 60 pages an hour. But for both of those, I was pretty close to 100 pages an hour in terms of my average you know, rate of reading. Um, so, you know, 914 pages checks out. I would write about nine hours that day. So uh, that's how I got through two books in one day. And then the second day uh, I read part of Dying of Whiteness. And I also read about, I read 47 pages, I guess, of uh, what was it? A Man Lay Dead. And so on a work day uh, between audiobook and a little bit of reading in the evening, but honestly not that much, probably about an hour, um, I ended up reading 297 pages. So that brings our total to 1,211 pages over the course of two days. So that equals out to two full books, uh, pr more than half of one, but you know, let's call it 60% of one, and then about a quarter of another one. So let's call that roughly three books. And uh, yeah, I mean, as you can see, there were days where I had other things that I got done, but they were specific types of reading days. So one was specifically a dedicated lazy reading day, and I try to take like one or two of those a month if I can. And then the other was just a typical work day. It is not unusual for me to get through roughly 300 to 350 pages a day um, during the work week. And yeah, I mean, again, depending on my reading speed, that equals out to like, let's call it between three to six hours of focused reading. But um, on the day I chose, I did a day where I was doing a lot of audio. Um, and when I have a day at work where that is possible for me to do, I try to take it and sneak in some more books. So anyway, um, I just thought this would be a fun kind of vlog idea because I do get so many questions about how I read so much. Uh, so hopefully this gives you a little insight into how I, you know, fit reading into my life. It is my primary hobby. I don't watch a lot of TV. I don't watch a lot of movies. So other than like hanging with my friends or writing, this is like my primary hobby when I'm not having to like you know, get my shit done. Uh, and I make it a priority. And that means I get through a lot of books. I also have the luxury of not having to take care of kids, not having to deal with a partner right now. So that also increases the amount of time that I have to decide when I want to do the things I need to do and how I want to do them. So also caveat there. But anyway, I hope this just maybe gives you a, an idea of how I fit reading into my life, maybe some ideas of how you could fit more into yours. Or if you're perfectly happy reading what you're reading right now, that is awesome too. So anyway, just a, a day in the life with me, what I read in a day. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy that. Let me know if you have thoughts about any of the books I read or if you have any tips about how you can fit more reading into your life, if that's something that somebody wants to do. But yeah. I think that will do it for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social needs if you are so inclined. I have all of that information listed in the description box below. And I think that will do it. Hope you're having an absolutely lovely day. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye.